Good morning. <clears throat> it's uh, May 20th. Oops, and my microphone is falling off. Good morning. Here we go. <laughs> my microphone fell off. Just a second. We'll get that fixed. If I could do it with one hand, it would help if I had two. Come on. annoying. Trying to do that with one hand is very annoying. Did I get it? No. There we go. Okay, well, after all that, it's, uh, it's still May 20th. Uh, it's just above freezing at two degrees Celsius. So I'm actually wearing my jacket and my gloves. This is actually about a, the first time in a month I've walked around the lake what, with one thing and another between being out of town and bad weather. And here it is cold again. In fact, there's supposed to be a mixture of rain and snow this afternoon. I mean, it won't stick, but it's coming. So, it'll be wet again. It was wet overnight, too. But all the same, off I go. The fellow in front of me is in short sleeves. He's refusing to bow to the <laughs> chilliness of the weather. Actually, it was drizzling a little bit even as I started, but I don't think I'll get wet to speak of. <clears throat> I don't know where they stopped there. If they stopped in the middle of the intersection, if there was somebody coming, that would have been the worst place to stop. Once I get back, well, I've still got this huge editing job I'm working my way through, but I've also got to do some uh, grant application work for Shadowpaw Press, book production grants from Creative Saskatchewan for the books I'm bringing out this fall. I here, sincerely hope it's not a problem. I'm kind of counting on those. I've had one before, so I know how to do, I know the process, but um, still, it would certainly change how I approach releasing them if I don't get that grant. And then this editing job is just going on and on. It's a huge, it's like a 230,000 word book. It's like two novels, really, in length, and I'm copy editing it, and I'm almost halfway through. I'm trying to do about 50 pages a day, and it's still it's going to take me another couple of weeks to finish it up. After which, I'm not doing any editing of other people's stuff for a while. Well, I do have a couple other editing jobs, but they're much smaller. Got to clear those out of the way so I can... Because I also got a grant to write a non-fiction book about science fiction fantasy writing based on my interviews in the World Shapers podcast. So, got to get on that. Plus, I'm writing a young adult novel. I try to do a bit on every day. So I'm probably going to try to walk fairly briskly here today. 
least there's no ice, despite it being chilly. I was trying to remember, it seems to me like it was so long ago I walked around the lake that there was actually still ice on it. Can that be right? Surely I've walked around at least once since it completely thawed. Not possibly not. Under the overpass, or under the bridge anyway, it's not really an overpass, it's an underpass beneath the bridge. With these murals, which were new last year, I think. I left one blank spot where graffiti still appears. But There's always a puddle here. This doesn't drain properly. We'll go, I think, counterclockwise today. There's the lake, the legislative building, somewhat unsettled looking skies, and geese. There are always geese. Let's see if there's any pelicans under the bridge, or just the other side of the bridge. They like to sit at the base of the uh, spillway, and I think it might be because fish come through that way over the spillway sometimes. It's my best guess anyway as to why they like to sit there. See if there's some over there or not. Look at the pelicans through there. Yeah, I know. I was just looking for them. Oh, there's some. You can just see them over there. See, I'm not the only one that notices there are pelicans there. Lots of birds flying over the surface of the water here looking for stuff to eat. standing in the yard there. These little birds are finding something out there. We'll take a turn up through the gardens and see what stat status stat status status what condition they're in. What their status is. There we go. The jogger. I've already seen a dog, so that's kind of the, the two things you can always expect to run into. Joggers and dogs. Sometimes they're the same person. Jogger with a dog. Not sure what the fencing's all about, except it looks like they were doing something under the surface of the yard there. Something to do with pipes or something, I would guess. Here comes another dog. Ooh, that breeze is chilly. Going from that direction, it's cold. Oh, look, goslings. The eggs are hatching. It's the first baby geese I've seen. Don't worry, I'm not hurting you. <laughs> he was not happy that I stopped to take pictures of his offspring. Or possibly her, who can tell at first glance. All right, we'll go up here. Looks like they haven't done anything except prepare the beds. Prepare the beds. 
Bring out your dead. Here's Walter Scott, first premier, with his blueprints of the legislative building there. And of course the Queen's at the other end here, celebrating her Platinum Jubilee. She was here in 2015 to unveil this statue of her on her favorite horse, which had a Saskatchewan connection. And uh, I was here with my daughter, who gave her flowers. It was pouring rain, we were standing right up here. She was, my daughter was about to turn four. I guess it was 2015 and she'll be turning 21 next month. That was just about a year ago that she was here, the queen that is. Uh, sorry. Ten years ago. No, wait. What was I trying to say? Just about this date all those years ago that the queen was here. And there she is on her horse. That looks back downtown. We are going this way. To say a building, the Marble Palace, it's sometimes referred to as. And in fact, when I wrote my fantasy novel, Mage Bane, which is set in a kind of a fantasy version of Saskatchewan, the king lives in the Marble Palace on the south side of an artificial lake. <laughs> and I totally had the ledge in my head every time I talked about the king's palace. Coming around the east end of it here. I think I missed a belt loop. My pants seem a little looser than I'd like. <laughs> Not a belt loop, but a belt notch. I think I... Belt hole, I guess. I think I may have gone one short on that when I was tightening my belt. Well, the Trafalgar fountain down there is not running yet. There's a little one over on the other side of the ledge that I walked by yesterday that was running already. But this one is still not. Won't be long though, I would think. Victoria Day weekend coming up, so... This is the Victoria Day weekend. Would be an appropriate time for the fountain to be turned back on. You can see down far off in the distance, they've got the aeration fountain going in the little pond that I'll be walking by in about 20 minutes when I get there. Those fountains, well this is just decorative, but the ones in the lake itself are there to put oxygen into the water for the fishies. The Trafalgar Fountain actually stood in Trafalgar Square in London until it was brought over here in 1930s, 1939 I think, roughly coinciding or coinciding with the visit of the King, King George and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother at that time, as they toured the Commonwealth to build morale and support with the knowledge that there was almost certainly a war coming in Europe. Which there was. Oh, 
keep catching the microphone cord and sometimes it makes the gimbal do something weird. So about here I'm thinking I didn't need the jacket because I'm starting to get quite warm. But it felt good back there with the wind blowing off of the lake, so... Anyway, too late now. I made my choice. I must wear it for the rest of the walk. I'm walking brisk, more briskly than some days today, so another reason why I'm starting to get warm. But not out of breath, so that's good. Holodomor Memorial, marking the Stalin's genocide of Ukrainians in the early 20th century. Russia has a long history of that sort of thing with Ukraine. Of course, it has special resonance right now. That's why it has flowers and things around it more than usual. actually reading a book about fateful decisions during the Second World War in 1940-41 time frame. And we're currently reading a chapter about Stalin and how he thought he had more time before the Germans invaded. Morning. Morning. That's what I think it was the old guys that work around the lake. I ran into them all the time. I think they are older than me, most of them. I'm sure other people see me walk around the lake and think, oh, look at that old guy. Doesn't seem right, but that's the way of the world. In your head, you're always younger than you really are. At least in my head. In my head, I'm still the same age I was 40 years ago. But I'm not. It's like 40 years have gone by. How did that happen? Nice to get another 40. holding my breath, because if I held my breath, I definitely wouldn't make it another 40. It's the uh, totem pole over there. I won't go over there today, but in some future walk I will go over there again. I'm going to unzip my coat because the, the uh, microphone is on my zipper. It's actually gotten a little lower since I started. Can't really do anything about that either very easily. It's funny, I've... Uh, my walks the last couple of days, a couple of people, I don't know where from, somewhere in the world, wondered where all the people were in Regina. <laughs> I keep explaining 
it's only 200,000 people, a bit more. It's a small, it's a small city. And uh, Saskatchewan is a very big province. So it's uh, a little bit smaller than Texas. And uh, population just over a million. So I think what struck home to us just how empty the province is was we were watching uh, the Grand Tour on Amazon Prime car show and they were running dune buggies in the Namibian desert and were commenting on the how sparsely populated Namibia was. I don't remember what the number was. 1.8 per square. I don't know. It was small anyway. And I got to thinking, you know, I'm pretty sure. So I looked it up and sure enough, Saskatchewan as a whole, as a province, is more sparsely populated than that. Uh, but it's, well, I suppose in Namibia, the population is, you know, not in the desert. And here, the population is not in the north. It's uh, largely in the south, southern half. In the north, it's uh, quite sparsely populated in thousands of square kilometers of boreal forest. And lakes, lots of lakes. So I think we're like one point, I don't know, one point one or I don't know if that's square mile or square kilometer. Anyway, sparse. You can look it up. Population density of Saskatchewan on Google. Check it out. But if you're looking at these walks and you live in, you know, London or somewhere in India, you know, any major city anywhere, Mexico City. Well, yeah, looks like there's nobody here. Because, relatively speaking, there isn't. As many people as there are in the world, you can do the math. If you gave them each, say, 5,000 square feet, that's a big house. Or a small house in the yard. You can figure out they don't actually take up that much land if you actually had them all in the same place on the planet. Look at all the goslings. Excuse me. Oh, oh, I scared that one. So I separated him, went between him and his parents. He didn't like that. More of them, they're everywhere. I knew those geese were getting frisky with each other back a few weeks ago. There's that really cold air where I am glad I'm wearing my jacket. Blowing over the lake again from the north. I'll take a turn around the uh, Pine Island here. I don't think their waterfall is going, but it might be. But if it is, I don't know if I'll go under it because the way the wind's blowing, it's probably blowing that water right up against the, the island. But we'll cross over to the lake and uh, to the island and take a look. That's Pine Island there. And downtown, of course, it's that way, right where the cold wind is blowing from. Other walkers. Pretty good put. She's walking fast. So this bridge is lined up, so the legislative building is directly ahead of us as we cross it. 
is sharp for me. We feel warm in January, but not in May. Any goslings here? I don't know. Lots of geese. A really windy day, you actually get white caps on the water. I don't think we're quite there today. Just had an exchange with a the goose there. And some gulls and pigeons. Those are pigeons. They happen to be white, but they're pigeons. Oh, who's there? Sai? Well, this is one of our main features, the lake here, right in the middle of town. It's a, Wascana Center is actually the largest urban park in North America, if you take it as a whole. It's bigger than Central Park, but not as rectangular. Oh, they've actually got this blocked off. So, this is another aeration feature, but clearly with the wind blowing the way it is, they've decided to block it off. Okay, well, we'll go up over here and go back that way. This is the pump house that makes the waterfall. It's not a natural waterfall by any means. This is just a lookout. So the waterfall goes right over there, and we're headed that way, Broad Street. I didn't quite know this was a complete dead end. I thought I could get out up here, but I can't, so down we go again. Back the way we came, I guess. It's probably too muddy to... What's it look like around there? Yeah, it's probably too muddy. All right, let's just go back the way we came. This was built for the Canada Summer Games, which were held here after the lake was deepened in uh, 2013. It's kind of the timing stand for when they do rowing competitions. And things like that. You already hissed at me once, so you're going to hiss at me again? Hiss, hiss, hiss. He didn't, he kind of hissed. It wasn't a very enthusiastic hiss. They try so hard to look threatening. But they're still geese. Right, so next time over the water, we'll be over there at that bridge. Pigeons. There's often birds here because people feed them, but I think they're probably a little disappointed right now. There's the sharp wind again, coming from that way. I'm going to zip my coat up a little further there. Pick up the pace, pick up the pace. I mean, I could try jogging, but the gimbal does pretty good with it, but I don't. <laughs> Again, not giving any consideration to the temperature, wearing shorts. Once it's May, even though I'm now feeling the occasional snowflake, you wear shorts, damn it. Yep, it's snowing. Not very hard, but it is. Don't know if it'll become visible or not on the camera. 
I can feel it and occasionally catch a glimpse against the dark background of something white falling from the sky. And it's not dandruff. Or cherry blossoms. <laughs> Our cherry blossoms won't show up for some time yet. What few cherry trees there are around town. There are some. Hopefully I'll see them later. On a walk. But it's uh, snowing here on May 20th. Very, very lightly. promised here's the next bridge the last one after this we will be permanently on the south side of the lake north side of the lake <sighs> directions so complicated this is the uh, broad street bridge Kind of parkway goes over top of there. If you walk down that way, you go to the university. About 20 minutes walk that way, it'll take you to the university, which I will do again on some future walk. Done it quite a few times, but I'll do it again. Haven't done it since the uh, lake thawed, so it has been a while. Okay, set the halfway point. I'm not sure. I've never quite been sure where halfway is because the path is not straight. It's either snow or sleet. It stings, so it might be closer to sleet. It's frozen water falling from the sky, whatever it is. They're honking at me, something else, probably at each other. See the gates are open now, so you can launch a boat here, should you happen to have one. I don't. There's a dragon boat over there now, though. What if we have our dragon boat festival this year? It's races and dragon boats and businesses will assemble teams and practice. And it's all for charity. That's a dragon boat there. Up here is the uh, Bar Willow eatery. with the best deck in town. They still have some of it that doesn't have a... Looks like that's a permanent fixture now, the tent. I suppose in the summer, at least it keeps you in the shade. Rowing club space down here. Oh, there's some boats on the water now. More dragon boats. A couple of power boats. Playground. Canada Games. West Canada Lake Center. Yeah, a bit damp here. 
And there's a dragon boat out of the water. Poodle, I always told my daughter when she was little. May have amused me more than it did her. Oh, well, there is another bridge. I was wrong about that being the last bridge. There's this bridge. You could avoid this bridge, but we didn't. Because I wanted to go by the aeration fountain over here as well. Yeah, it's more interesting down here, closer to the water than it is further up. You can hear it from here, the fountain. There she blows. This does kind of look like a whale spouting. Coming through, geese. No goslings, you're a little behind the program here. Better get egg laying. Be winter before you know it. There's the aforementioned mountain. And the aforementioned bridge. We'll stop in the middle for a quick look. So there's the fountain, a little wind blown today. Downtown, it's over there. I live that direction. And there's the ledge from the east. <laughs> there's kind of a viewing platform up there you can get to from uh, up above. Next is Willow Island. Can't walk to it though. Have to take a boat. Someone with the dog. Over there is HMCS Queen, which is basically a landlocked ship. Belongs to the Navy. It's where the naval cadets hang out. <coughs> so if you want to join the Navy, that's where you'd go, I think. Thank you. There's one in Saskatoon too, which for some reason is called HMCS Unicorn, which on the face of it seems a little odd. This one is the Queen. Makes sense for Regina. Regina, of course, as we pronounce it. But Regina is in Latin for Queen. Unicorn though has a long history in British naval circles, so I imagine that's where the name came from. Willow Island. You can picnic over there if you rent it, get a boat. There's the Queen Building. This 
snow didn't amount to anything. It's pretty much stocked again now. Could be more later though. I don't think they're expecting anything that'll stick. You have to snow really hard for several minutes to even turn white. And it would probably melt pretty quick after that. But we'll see. I won't be walking in it anyway. Back to work as soon as I get home. After I cool down. After I've uploaded this video to the computer and then started uploading it to YouTube for the permanent record. I know the live streams are recorded and they're there as well. I used to delete them but I stopped doing that. But uh, these are high resolution and they don't have any buffering in them once you upload the final recording. You can only I can only stream at 720 because uh, I'm live streaming to both YouTube and Facebook and that's all Facebook will allow. Also, be more likely to run into buffering issues at 1080. Nope, speaking of Facebook. Hello, Wendy. No, we didn't get any snow. I know that parts of the province did turn white, but not here. We mostly got rain. Quite a bit of it in the last little while. It's a chilly spring so far. It's only been a few really warm days. And long range forecast is still kind of 17, 18 for a high. But I'm sure there's hot days coming some point I'll make the switch to shorts for these walks but I haven't done it yet a couple of days I could have but I didn't wouldn't want to do it today despite seeing people who are wearing shorts at least not where the wind's blowing on you more goslings And I always point out, this is where the Shards of Excalibur Young Adult Series starts. Lady of the Lake shows up right there. Tells a local girl that she's now the Lady of the Lake, and she and this boy have to find the scattered Shards of Arthur's Sword Excalibur before the evil Merlin can. Oh dear, that's an injured goose. And his modern day guys as... Uh, Rex Major is kind of a Steve Jobs, Bill Gates kind of computer guy. Uh, it was plus two when I set out. With wind chill of minus three. Probably a degree or two warmer by now, but maybe not. The wind is blowing down from the north. And it's quite sharp. And there has been a bit of snow to be seen falling. Still there's a few flakes coming down. There's the old guys again. <laughs> They're probably parked back there in the parking lot I just walked by. the rest of them. <laughs> Up ahead is where they're working on the new swimming pool. Over there is the college building and dark hall and the new credit union building. Oh, had to change arms. Morning. I 
hope if I end up in a kind of cane, I'm still willing to get out here and do the best I can. Stave off the ravages of time as long as you can. Ultimately, time always wins. Don't hear any actual work going on over there today. Maybe they're taking the week long weekend extra long. lake from the north there's the other aeration fountains dead ahead I don't know which way the wind's blowing it sometimes sprays water onto the sidewalk but it's blowing today, probably not. Oh, the snow just intensified slightly again. Duck, duck, goose. Perfect. Could ask for anything more. There used to be a playground up there we took Alice to all the time, but it's all been swallowed by the pool construction. Hopefully there'll be a new playground. Not that Alice is so big on playgrounds anymore at 21, but <laughs> there was a time when it was very important to us to find playgrounds from time to time. And if she saw one while we were traveling, she always wanted to stop. Well, we couldn't really do that. Bandstand is still here. Gazebo, whatever you want to call it. I performed on that stage and had been to somebody's wedding up there. <clears throat> A cappella group I was in for years called Midnight Sun. We sang up there once. that group but we haven't been together for 30 years so I don't think we're getting back for a reunion tour. I think I was the oldest in the group. I'm pretty sure I was. So we still could. See if we remember any of the old songs. Don't know where everybody is though. This is uh, Wascana Center. So technically this is Wascana Park, but Wascana Center is the overall conglomeration of parks. And uh, As I said, in total area, Wascana Center is the largest urban park in North America. 2,300 hectares or something like that. But it's much, it's very strung out, so this is kind of the central part of the park network. Most of the time when I'm walking along this uh, bike path, be somewhere within the Muscatna Center network or one of the other city parks. I asked somebody how long, because I had talked about walking the whole length of the path from southeast to northwest or vice versa. Apparently it's 50 kilometers. I kind of thought I could do it in a day, but apparently not. It would have to be planned out and done in stages. 
I might try it sometime if I can coordinate it. I'd need help. Dropped off at one end and picked up at a specific place a few kilometers down the road. I do about five to six kilometers an hour. So that would take, you know, if I did do the whole thing, I could probably do it in 10 hours. I could do it in a day, but it would be a very long day. <laughs> Split it into four, and I could do it in four longish days, an hour and a half to two hours each. All right, now we're back into my neighborhood. Again, house I'd love to see the inside of. Again, Harrington Muse, where Wally Knight from my Charge of Excalibur books lives. A fictitious house in a real location, as I like to say. Almost home. How brisk was this one? 51 minutes. Yeah. It's uh, going into Honda Pine Island always adds an extra five to 10 minutes from what it would be if I just walked swiftly around the lake. Although I kind of take a shortcut by going up by the ledge too a, a bit, maybe if I followed the edge of the lake, it might be a bit longer. I know there are tulips around, but I haven't seen it. Oh, wait, spoke too soon. There's some tulips right there. Tulips. There's a nice little garden at the end of this boulevard here, and uh, tulips are part of it. Usually there's quite a bit that grows up down there. Planted by people in the neighborhood. Watskana. Central Wascana Center is the name of the whole complex. Uh, Wascana Center Authority, if you're looking up a website, RE for Center, I believe. Wascana Center Authority oversees Wascana Center and the various parks. facts on their website, I'm sure. Not that I've been there, but recently. Tavern School dead ahead. My daughter's elementary school. She was still an elementary student. She hasn't been now for seven years or thereabouts. Let's see, four years of high school, three years of university. Yeah, seven years. Going on eight. And I'll be stopping just up here. Hmm. Fire engine going somewhere in a hurry in the distance. Somebody's day is not going well. Okay. I'll stop here. So. Thanks for walking around the lake with me. You can see the snow coming down a little bit there. I will be, uh, I imagine, back tomorrow. Bye for now.